Hello, welcome back to the tutorial in intensive English. It's nice to have you back again. My name is Katie and today we are in intermediate module seven and we're continuing our discussion of sentence stress in English. This is our second module about sentence stress. And today we're gonna to spend uh, just a brief time reviewing sentence stress, which we introduced last time. And then we're gonna look a little bit more closely at rhythm and practice with some more complex examples. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So quickly to review sentence level stress. Well, just a few things about stress. So word stress, some syllables, remember word stress, some syllables are louder, longer, and higher in pitch than others. Same principle at the sentence level, some words are louder, longer, and higher in pitch. And remember, even though we're still talking about the syllables inside those words. So if you have a word, that's a content word and it's uh, you know three syllables long, you're still just gonna stress the stress syllable in that word. But that word will be more stressed because of that than the function words around it or the unstressed syllables around it. And then we learned that rhythm is created, the rhythm of English, the rhythm that native speakers are accustomed to is created when we have this alternation between uh, stressed and unstressed. Okay. So remember, if you want a deeper explanation of this, head back to module six. So let's talk more about rhythm and stress in English. We just kind of touched on this briefly last time. So I want to start off by talking about syllable timed and stress timed. Now, these are two different ways that you can categorize languages. Um, some languages are stress timed, some languages are syllable timed. English is a stress timed language. This means, what does this mean? This means, it means English is really stressed out. No, <laughs> you might, we might be stressed out, right? Okay, so what this means is that not all syllables are equal. They're not all pronounced fully the same with the same amount of time. The time it takes to say something in English is dependent on the number of stressed syllables, okay? So this is a stress-timed language. The time that it takes to say something depends on how many stressed beats you have. Now, a syllable-timed language would be a language that does give equal attention to each syllable. And so the time, the timing of something depends on the number of total syllables, not just the number of stress syllables. So this is a little bit of a distinction between these two. So English is stress timed and it's this stress timing that creates our rhythm. These stress syllables happen at fairly regular intervals. So every pretty regularly, you're going to get a stressed syllable in English. You might get a couple unstressed or a few unstressed, and then boom, you're going to get another stressed. And our unstressed syllables, right, the things in between the stressed syllables, they can get like scrunched up more, they can get kind of elongated a little bit, depending on how much time we need to fill between the next stressed syllable. If we have a lot of unstressed syllables between our two stressed syllables, they might get compressed a little bit more so that we can kind of get to that stressed syllable, right? Let's look at a simple example just to kind of illustrate this point clearly. So here I've got my two imagine two big circles if we're going from my big and small circles in my PowerPoint. So drink and water are our two stressed content words. And then we have some function words filling in the gaps around them in the, the these are the small circles. 
in my, my bubbles. So drink water. What if I add my pronoun you and my modal verb should, I don't say you should, not if I'm speaking regularly, I would say you should, you should. And I reduce those vowels to a schwa. You, you should, you should drink, you should drink, you should drink, you should drink some water. I don't say some water, I say some, some, some water. You should drink some water. So I still have two beats there. You should drink some water, some water, some water, <laughs> right? That's what drives you nuts when you're listening to a native speaker. You're like, why are they eating their words? I can't understand what they're saying. And they're not doing it um, because they're lazy. They're doing it because that's how we get the rhythm of English the alternation of stressed and unstressed syllables, right? Every native speaker of English does this, everybody. All right, so, so far we've looked at kind of pretty short uh, sentences. So we're gonna look at a longer sentence now. I have a sentence here. We're going to talk to the teacher after class because we're confused about the assignment. So for now, we're just going to go by the rule that we're gonna stress all the function or all the content words, right? We can get really complicated. The stress gets pretty complicated. But today, we just wanna get used to hearing this alternation a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna stress those content words. So I've got going, right? This is our main verb, the verb go, right? The first syllable is stressed, talk, Okay, that is our infinitive, but it's a verb, it's a content word. Teach in teacher, that's the syllable that's stressed. Class, confused, second syllable in confused, that's a verb, is stressed. And assignment, the second syllable in our noun, assignment, is stressed. Now, we haven't really talked about pausing yet. But in a sentence this long, I'm not going to say this in one breath. I'm not going to get way deep into pausing, but basically I'm just going to break this sentence up into some chunks so that we can focus on saying it together. So let's start with the first part. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. So I'm going to reduce the were, right? Were, were, we're going, we're going to, we're going to. Two is to, to talk, to talk. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. We're going to talk to the, to the, to the teacher, to the teacher. We're going to talk to the teacher after class. We're going to talk to the teacher after class. Let's do that part. We're going to talk to the teacher after class. We're going to talk to the teacher after class. Now let's do the second part. Because we're, because we're, because we're, because we're confused, because we're confused, because we're confused about the, about the, about the assignment about the assignment. We're going to talk to the teacher after class because we're confused about the assignment. Okay, so hopefully me saying that multiple times helps you kind of feel that rhythm. We're going to talk to the teacher after class because we're confused about the assignment. Now, you're not gonna master this in two modules or even three modules. This is gonna be something that we're gonna be practicing throughout all these different levels, okay? And you're gonna practice it on your own. But today, I just wanna make you more aware that this is happening, okay? Let's look at another one. Okay, so this one is kind of fun because it helps us play with stress and rhythm a little bit. Okay, so I have this sentence, I ate a big snack this afternoon. I ate a big snack this afternoon. Now, when I say this normally, I only hear really 
three stressed beets in here. I ate a big snack this afternoon. Now snack is getting more stress than big. Big isn't getting a whole lot of attention. I wouldn't say that it's a big deal in this sense, right? Not the way I'm saying it right now. to each other. I don't know if you heard this, but I stretched out the pronunciation of big a little bit. My vowel lengthened a little more than it did normally when I wasn't stressing snack. I ate a big snack this afternoon. And by stretching that vowel out a little bit longer, it helps me maintain that rhythm, right? It gives me a little bit extra time before I get boom, right to that next stress syllable that happens right after it. So, like I said, stress is kind of confusing because you can mess with it a lot. And that kind of makes us want to pull our hair out, but don't stress. <laughs> Let's do one more, okay? I like to do cake examples because I do like to bake cake. Okay, I like to bake fancy cakes for my friends and family. I like to bake fancy cakes for my friends and family. Now, I don't know if you heard that, but I feel like I stressed five beats when I say this normally. I like to bake fancy cakes for my friends and family. And when I say it normally like that, I kind of don't give bake a lot of attention. I kind of just skip over it. I like to bake fancy cakes for my friends and family. And this, I'm not really calling a lot of attention to the baking. Maybe I'm like, yeah, I know I bake cakes. I'm focusing on their, their fancy and their cakes. And also I've got that one syllable content word bake that comes right next to the first syllable of fancy, which is also a content word. And so, yeah, just like our last slide example, there's no unstressed syllable to kind of break up those stressed beats and give me that alternation that I'm looking for. So I could lengthen bake. I like to bake fancy cakes. That would solve my problem like I did last time. Or I just don't give a lot of attention. I say, I like to bake fancy cakes for my friends and family. And I just get right over to fancy and that's fine. Remember how I said, not all content words are always going to receive equal stress. Now, not as big of a problem between fancy and cakes because I have that unstressed syllable in fancy that gives me a pause before I get to cakes, which is one syllable. All right, so this is a lot of information in this slide or in this module, but the main thing to take away again Sentence stress means some words are stressed more than others in a sentence. It's the alternation of stressed and unstressed syllables happening at regular intervals that gives us the unique uh, rhythm of English. You don't need to produce this rhythm today, okay? I just want you to start listening for it more train your ear to hear it. The more you hear it, you're going to improve your listening skills because you'll be listening for the most important information, those highlighted stressed words, and keep practicing it um, at home 
and it'll start to get into your speaking as well. Next week, we are going to start to look at how changes in stress can affect the meaning of what we're trying to say. So until then, keep practicing and I will see you soon. 